That was the sound of the scanner magically appearing in my hands. Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here, bringing you another do it yourself video. Today, we're going to be talking about the IP508 scanner. What you have here is a brand new product offering from Xtool, and I've spent a fair amount of time making videos on models that are higher end than this Xtool D7 and the Xtool IP819. Consult the rest of my channel if you want to find out how to do many, many functions on various types of Xtool scanners. But the first thing I want to point out to you is if you know one of them, you know kind of, you know how to use most of them because they have a very similar look and feel. The physical interface is the same. There's the on off button, the DC charge port. This is the interface that goes to the connector for the OBD2 port in your car, and then a USB charge cable or data cable. And then there's a microphone right here. You're looking at the screen and this is a cost reduced model and the screen is slightly smaller for that reason. Here's a side by side comparison of the IP508 and the IP819. They have the identical form factor. The only visible difference is the size of the display. This is what came in the mail and inside blow molded plastic case. The more expensive tools, the D7 IP819, they come with a plastic hard case with hinges on it and clasps. The OBD2 cable is there. The power adapters for the wall outlet so that you could plug in the USB charge cable or data transfer cable. And then there's a quick start guide. Many of the X-Tool scanners have a similar type of user interface like this. There's no difference in this menu right here, but the big difference is when you go into the special functions menu. This scanner has six of the special functions. Steering, angle, sensor, reset, oil reset, electronic parking brake, battery management system reset, throttle position reset, and ABS bleeding. These are the most common special functions that you're going to need. So even though other scanners have more, I think the IP819 has like 30 or 40 of these special functions. For a beginner looking for an economy tool, this might be the one for you, you decide if those functions are what you want to do. Now, just so happened that I have a problem with my truck. When I started it up, it said there was a problem with uh, reduced power. So let's take this thing over and see if we can figure out what is wrong with our pickup truck. So here we are inside the vehicle now. And this time when I started the truck, the message reduced power mode appears to have been cleared. However, I'm guessing there might still be a code in the computer. Check engine light is off. Uh, I think the vehicle's been started about five or six times since the original issue happened. I've got the cable plugged into the OBD2 port down there, just past my knee, and we'll do an auto scan. And one nice feature is this unit is charging now that I've got it plugged into the vehicle. We are going to automatically detect, and this is a Sierra four-wheel drive, and it is, yes, a four-wheel drive, and it has dual zone climate control, and it's a manual climate control, has the up level radio, it's under 8600, rear drum brakes, and it picked out the VIN, and it picked out basically 5.3 liter 2006, so that is correct. And we'll do an automatic scan here and see what happens. Okay, so it picked up a failure in the powertrain module, so we can read trouble code data, diagnostic trouble code. Okay, so this is the code that it was showing, accelerator, pedal position system a p1125-19 and a p2125-19 and i think it's that's sensor one and sensor two this ignition cycle is passed uh, so it, the light went off if you look at since it was cleared it had passed and failed for both of these codes code live data here we go okay engine live data engine data engine speed idle speed coolant temperature app indicated angle zero and throttle position in desired angle six indicated angle five okay so what i'm going to do is select all of these devices and or all these sensors and i will do custom and i will do oh i can turn on data recording here perfect okay i'll do custom graph it'll show me individual graphs here of them but if i do combine i think it'll show them all to me in one graph okay there we go all right i don't have the throttle pedal pressed right now and i'll put it part way down and we should see some change there yeah and it's going up and then i will let off at the throttle again 
and it should go back down and it does okay I'm curious to know if this is a problem with this throttle position desired angle of being six throttle position indicated angle of six okay this is the computer telling the throttle position where to be but the accelerator pedal is zero so that's what I need to be focused on not the throttle position all right, so if we look at the APP indicator angle, it shows a zero. I'm going to turn the vehicle off because I want to do foot to the floor acceleration and see what happens. I've got a graphic showing the accelerator pedal indicated angle, and it's currently shown at 0% because I'm not touching the throttle or the pedal. And now I pedal right to the floor, and I should see a reading approaching 100%. And that's exactly what we see, 100%. And then I will slowly back it down. Slowly, slowly. And that's a pretty smooth line. So that tells me that the sensors are working properly, at least right now. I was having a battery charging issue, overcharging at times when the vehicle was running, it was overcharging. And then I think I've got a weak battery and that was causing when I started it to the voltage to be very, very low. So I think possibly one of those issues may have caused a false code to be tripped in my vehicle's computer. So I'm going to clear the code and completely ignore the code and see if it comes back after some driving. I bet you it won't come back. Okay, now if I go into report, I can go into data playback and I can play back the data that we just captured. And so here it is, and we should probably see, yeah, that was when I did not so gently press the throttle to get it to 100%, but here we should see the gradual decline. And so this would suggest to me that the sensors are fine that edge right there and that edge at the start that was my uh, not careful <laughs> activating of the pedal so it's kind of neat you can record the data and play it back later all right let's clear this code I'm actually going to generate a DTC report so I've just done that by pressing the button and that not only shows on the screen it it will display it and now I'm going to clear all DTCs and it shows normal no DTCs even though it's in red, so we'll go back in and we'll automatic scan again. And everything shows as green. If you go into report and then diagnosis report, this will be the report that I just generated. And it shows the codes for future reference. They get stored in here. And this shows live data. The last time those codes were pulled from the computer. Interesting, if you look at maximum value and minimum value columns, you scroll down here to ignition one signal. The maximum was 15.4 and the minimum was 10.44. That's bothersome. 15.4 is a pretty high voltage, so I wonder if I have an over overcharging alternator and a bad regulator. I'll have to look into that. This is everything I wanted to show you on how easy it is to use the IP508 scanner. Show you the live data because the live data function is very powerful. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.